All right, I'm looking to see about this. I've done it live, but never done someone with it. Um, so I'm going to wait for Willie D to join. Uh, hello, all. My name is Will. I work for A-Step, um, and we'll be talking to Willie D today, who logged on. Um, I'm going to look and see if he's asking to join yet. Great. Again, my name is Will. And I'll be talking to someone named Will. It's going to be two Wills in the same room. In the same virtual room, I guess. Hello, all. Hello, hello. So we can do the question uh, thing as well, and comments and all of that. Um... All right, I'm gonna go live with Willie D. Ah. So we're waiting for him. Glad to see people here. <laughs> Jumbo! Hi, darling! Oh, look at you! Oh, you're just making me smile! Color the purple of royalty. What is, yeah, royalty. what is that background doing? I'm telling you, I usually have this bookcase as a background, but I'm going to be plain white. Have you not seen my new setup? I saw the new setup, because well, you did a, um, a stop motion thing. Can I show you really fast? Yeah. Yes, please give us a tour. So, I have a full, I have whatever color you want, gray, purple, Green screen, black. And so literally they just hang against the wall. Uh -huh. And I just move them around so I can like change the color faster. Listen, gay Oprah. Full gay Oprah <laughs> in the fucking house. I've learned to censor myself. <laughs> right, right. Censoring, sure, sure. She's so much. Um, girl, it has been I mean, I mean, we've talked a little this, that, and the other, but when was the last time I hugged your face? Mm, February. Less than like 2019. Yeah. The last time I think I saw you was the show. Was the cabaret. The show? Well, yeah. Because we haven't, yeah. Because January is disgusting. In February, we would have taken advantage of it had we known. Had we known, girl. Had can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So here's bed. the deal. Um, Low key, I'm in. I'm not going to show you what, what is around me right now because it's my <laughs> room set up. I do have this lovely armchair that I've listen. I've been on Zoom so much, and people are um, have been commenting on this chair that I have. Cute, honey, well, it's, it's and like looks an comfortable. Moment. I'm not going to show you. Yeah. That I'm wearing shorts instead of real funny Same. pants. Same. Um, but this this thing it, it's kind of like. Uh, if I was to have shoulder pads, you know, it's giving me like 80s <laughs> shoulder pads moment. I was gonna say nice 80s moment, sensible. Right, sensible. exactly. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what it is. Um, yeah. Okay, so I, I just wanna know how you are at first. How, what, what's like your day been? What's your week been? What's your month been? What's your year been? It's been, honestly, it's been good. It's been really surprisingly good in a way of like, what month is it? July? July. June. May was hectic. Uh -huh. May was doubtful. May was scary. Yeah. And then, like, June picked up my energy again. I've been, like, yeah. I booked two commercials <laughs> in quarantine. Now. And I started doing, I started working with Scruff. I don't know if I can say that yet. But I was, they were going to move hosting to Jacked, the new app. And so they were, like, sure, sure. prepping me to host it. And I've been in like workshops to host, but it, it's not going to happen anymore. They're not going to, we're, they're going a different route with a different show, which I'm still going to be playing with that one. But like, it's been cool to feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like a host for real. Does that make like, I'm like, people well, are reaching been a out host to me. for real ever since what? Ever since? I mean, for years now. And granted, they're like, there's steps, right? There's like yeah, different yeah, markers yes. that you can like, have. 
huge market. And like, there's that thing is never like done, but it's like, it's not like Broadway or musical theater where I can like audition and get something and then host. You just have to like be a host and you have to like figure it out and you have to like build a following of people who trust you and who like look forward to hearing what you have to say. You know what I mean? And so it's been cool because now that we kind of the quarantine allowed me to sit still and allowed me to actually like realize I'm was starting to run just for like notoriety. Is that the right word? You know what I mean? I was starting to like Yeah, like what, notoriety, what, I'm here, yeah. look at me. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. what can I pop up? How many videos can I produce? Blah blah. But I'm like, no, like I need to make sure that what I say is what I mean and like that is the route I need to go. And it's been cool that people have reached out to me to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Well, and I do think it's interesting, specifically with you as someone who is such an accomplished performer, but that during quarantine, you're able to utilize this other aspect of skill and talent and hard work. It's been, it literally has been like what has saved my life. Yeah. Because I don't know, like my whole family is, my brothers are in California, my mom and dad are in Texas, my like close grandma, auntie, they're in St. Louis. So like I have no one here, family wise. That like you know what I mean. And so and even uh, I, I want to say it, but not say talking about it. Like say it. Uno, uno, unito. For everyone who doesn't know, my puppy of thirteen years, I had to put down in December. He was old. He, it was time. He'd been on tour. He literally went to thirty three states on the bodyguard tour. Like he had the most incredible life. But let me tell you, May is when because his birthday was in June. So May was when like it actually started settling that like, I would never see him again. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna cry, I won't cry. <laughs> but no, it's just been, it was, it's been cool because everyone in Broadway, there's like, you know, there's, there's no jobs, nothing's happening. Everything had to be figured out. And so it was nice that I'd already been in the corn, I'd already been working from home. I'd already been like doing everything virtually anyway. You know what I mean? And working in this realm. So it, it really has been a game changer for me. Yeah. Um, and just for, for the people to know, so you've done um, a variety of different gigs since what, 20? When was your first gig? Well, My I'm first gig? specifically professional. Ever? Actors. Or like in New York? My first uh, professional was. gig ever was Six Flags up Professional. Six Flags over Texas, the yes, original Six the... Flags. I was a performer. With Todrick Hall, right? With Todrick Hall. Yeah, Todrick and I went to high school together. We went to high school together. <laughs> yes, and we went to high school together. We were both of y'all the way that both of y'all are now. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, being extra. Uh, doing extra thing. for no reason. <laughs> for no absolute reason. Because our school was huge. And the, what's weird is that, like, if you were in theater, you were cool. Like, people love to go to shows. People love to support theater. It was like if you did football or if you did theater, you were, like, everything. So in I that specific school? In our why, specific why school. Why was theater such a big thing there? I think because uh, we had, like, a lot of resources. We had a huge auditorium. We did, like, five or six shows a year. And, like, people were, like, we included, like, the drill team and the steppers. And, like, we kind of got the other... Like for the musical, we got the band to play for us. You know what I mean? So it felt like it wasn't like some high schools where they just had the tracks or got out. We like got all of the fine arts involved. So they were like really big productions. Texas right. money. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, so you my first. Six, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. And what that was that? Was that? that was, I did that junior, senior year was my first show, and I did it all through college and saved all that money. And that's actually how I moved to New York. From performing money? Because we did, it was like $10 an hour, but we worked like 12, 13 hour days, but we only did mm -hmm. 30 minute shows. So we do a 30 minute show, hour long break. 30 minute show, hour long break. So really we were just getting paid to like kiki with our friends and like joke oh, around. Yeah. Like I the show did, was nothing. Uh huh. I did a summer thing and then hadn't booked anything for like the fall. And so I did a Halloween Fright Night, get this, at, um, uh, at not Bush, at King's Dominion, um, <laughs> where we would go down on a little bus Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We did, you probably did the same thing, five shows uh -oh. within, what, a three-hour period? Maybe four yeah. hours. Yeah, how many shows? Five. Five shows. You get it. Am I? No, no, no. Back to back to back to back. I th it was. It was something like that. It was something like yeah. that. Uh, 
my lighting is you, you would you need to help me with my lighting here oh well i got, I got lumis i got ring lights like what do you whatever you like i do for you oh, sorry, right. what's this lumi <laughs> what's this yeah. lumi thing so the loom it's just a case that goes around your phone do i have it around it's a case that goes around your phone and it literally lights up so like if you're front and facing it lights up and if it's back facing it has like a light that faces you uh-huh which is probably good for things like this right now like being at the club right, like right. This, things like this things like this yeah yeah or in the club or if this was the you know because I'm, I'm a black girl she gotta be seen Annie. right 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 can, can be your yeah, shadow like, right okay, yes. get these teeth. you gotta be seen we all gotta be seen right now we're just trying to be seen you know yeah, yeah. seen and heard honey seen so, and heard i was talking to my roommate and we were uh talking about like do you want to go out or something like that uh yeah. and how that meant before march it meant like yeah. we're gonna go to the club right like we're gonna yeah, go we're going out, out. And it's gonna be a moment and now it's like do you want to go for a walk by the hotel yeah. with our masks on okay would you like to step outside of the door correct and sometimes the answer oh is no God. sometimes it's i do not want to oh no no thank you how are you doing how is life up there how is like we're on the same island, just can't touch each other. I know, seriously. Well, I, I haven't gone down near you in a while, but I've been going down to uh, like 80 second stuff. Okay. And um, there's someone who, you know, works in the biz who is now realizing that he needs things that we all do, right? That like yeah. shopping and all that kind of stuff. And once you get what's the level that they're saying right now, 65 or something like that, that yeah. it, you know, it is safer and better and easier mm -hmm. uh, to have, to, to not have to have to do all those yourself. Yeah. It's been interesting to wor work in that capacity. Whereas before it would be like, oh, I'm doing this as a personal assistant thing. Yeah. Uh, and after COVID, it's like, oh, yeah, we just, we're all needing people to, to help us out, you know? With Girl, tasks. yeah. Isn't that um, weird? The whole world is on, like, the same vibe. Uh -huh. Lack of a better word, but we're all experiencing the same damn thing. Yeah. I that was interesting. Yeah, I, I attended this little, like, thing yesterday, and the woman was saying, yes, it affects us. This, uh, it was something like, all of us are being affected by this, mm -hmm. but we're all but we're being affected by it in different ways. True. Whether it's where we live, obviously the US versus what, New Zealand, which yeah. is there right now. Yeah. Our race, our socioeconomic status, access to healthcare. You know, like there's so many yeah. things yeah. that it's affecting all of us, but just in, in such interesting Wait. different ways, you know. Um, oh. But I've been good. I, um, I'm keeping busy and, and you know that's kind of my my mo and and yours too to be like and honestly sometimes in reflection it, it's and, and granted some coping mechanisms aren't necessarily the worst but sometimes it's a coping mechanism yeah you know? no it's like, yes, for me yeah it's like i'll fill my day so that the 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 pressures of the world or whatever maybe okay. don't you know affect me yeah. actively do you rest though do you like actively take time to rest you know what i was doing in march april and may that i'm not doing now what's that naps and i really to bring back a nap i've been doing this whole i get tired at 9 30 yeah after, and then i like try to okay so here's another thing so got my my uh straight brothers in north carolina love them to death god yeah. bless them. um and they're, they are loving, um, as, as I enjoy, you know, like Star Wars, um, those types of things. And one of them is Marvel. So uh, Avengers, uh, Iron Love Man, Marvel. Captain America, that kind of thing. And so I've been working my way through uh, all of these movies. You know, there's like 19. 100,000 of them. Yeah. Um, I'm currently just finished. Um, what was it? The, the last Thor, Thor Ragnar, yeah. where uh, Chris so Hemsworth uh, shaves his head. head. Yeah, shaves his head, which I was very okay with. Granted, you know I like the long hair. Him yes, long girl. Hair good. I, think, I think long hair is hot. I'm a proponent of long hair. But, <laughs> Probably so um, long, too, by now. What'd you say? 
Okay. My hair is probably so long. Yes. Oh my. Gosh. I'm wearing my eye step shirt. It goes all the way down. All the way down. We're going on 20 inches. So. Is this somebody's... for the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> Go put it up, hold it up while I'm doing it. That's funny. Um, but anyway, just finished the war. Chris Tim's with the and uh, just started at the next, which is Black Panther 2018, which I saw in the movies. Yeah. And the, but the cool thing is, if you watch it in a row, you see how they're all like relating to each other. Yeah. And storytelling. Um, so all that to say, I've been doing that, but I'm not like a big um, kind of fan of the of the thing. I, I like it. I'm entertained by it. Yeah. But listen, if if it's dark and I'm not talking, my body's not moving, I'm falling asleep. So I've been getting like 30 minutes through every night and then just falling asleep out. at freaking like 10.30, getting up at 7, took a bath yeah. yesterday in the morning. Yeah, sensible. Um, okay, so I'm going to ask about this pandemic stuff. What have you, like, what have you been doing beca because of the pandemic? Has it shifted? Has it changed? I'm sure the answer is yes. And how has it? Like, what do you, like, work-wise or just, like, live? Uh, specifically work-wise, yeah. Specifically work-wise? Oh, Dory, Dory, I want to tell you, uh, our communications and uh, development manager is on right now at A-Step. Hi, Dory! Shout out to Dory. So cool. I think I've uh, heard Dory in a meeting and in a Zoom call reference Black Panther. So, uh, as she <laughs> should. As she <laughs> every single, did I tell you I watched Black Panther every day for two months? Get out of here. Not every single day for two months when I went like, at night, I would work and watch Black Panther. Because it just made, it was the first Marvel movie that made me feel powerful. Mm -hmm. It was like, like representation matters. I know we said all the time, but like to have someone like King Prince T'Challa stand there and just look so regal and look like me and you know what I mean? Like, emote like me. It made me feel so good. I watched it every single day. My mom thought it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda forever! Yes! I, I thought it was interesting. Have you seen any of the other movies? Have you seen, yeah. like... Yeah. So, in the, some other movies, you know, there's, like, Iron Man, Scarlett Johansson, who I think is a boss, etc., etc., mm -hmm. who are... I think they're all white. And then there's, like, Rhodey, who's Captain America's best friend, and... Mm -hmm. And my brother's gonna be mad at me for not remembering this. Oh, and then the Falcon. I don't about his name. Yeah. Falcon. So there's like a Falcon and then there's War Machine, who are both black. But this is interesting because they're like the sidekick, right? Yeah. Um, whereas, I mean, I've, I've only watched the first 10 minutes and the last time I saw it was two years ago. But it seems like Wakanda's, or, uh, he is a king. Like, yeah, that's he like a he's king. His character about his life, doing his thing. It's it's just it's and it's cool because it's like our culture too mixed in like with the music and with the hip hop and with like it's just it's mm -hmm. very relatable for me and it's what made me feel like everyone else feels when they watch Marvel movies and not that race really matters but you know what I mean but like to see a superhero that looks like you it does matter yeah. and like I love Marvel movies because I love the editing and I love the such effects and I I think that part is cool but right. to I don't know for some reason just seeing a bunch of people who look like me who are bomb as fuck like every other Marvel movie is it was cool yeah uh, anyway so I for me I what we asked the question one more time I was wondering um I mean we can go in any direction but I was wondering about the uh pandemic you were saying that you you booked two commercials yeah um yeah what how has what have you been doing it in the pandemic uh, to continue to kind of this journey of art and creation? Well, at the very beginning of pandemic, I had a meeting with my agents because I was like, it was interesting how we talked about being an art, like the Broadway performing arts part, because I was like, not out, but I was getting nervous that I was starting to feel like I didn't belong there anymore. Because I was, I'm always the callback kid. Like my first job was cool because I started auditioning in high school, in college for Hairspray Tour. And so it took a year and a half. But once I finally moved to New York, it was only four months before I got the tour. So like I had that, you know, you get that, like once you book your first job and it's like Hairspray that you have, there's an, not an ego, the word is ego without it being like an ego. There's an ego you get and you feel like a thousand percent. And so like I am always invited to things and I always get to the end, but it's like, 
because these other boys already have the credit and i hate that that's an excuse but like they know the casting directors they know the directors they've worked on that level so it's always easy to cut me first you know what i mean but it's like at what point the casting directors know me they know my work they see that i gig and i gig and i gig like, at what point do you just give it to me because i need it you know not that i need it but like i'm constantly coming in for you but then constantly getting cut and then i was getting all these commercial auditions because i feel like as a host because I speak, because I am so about my words and because I'm like very personable, I think people, and this is the cool part, I think parts that weren't going to be considered for a black male, they consider me specifically for. And which is amazing, but I am like always in for something. And you know, you only get one out of every 100. And so my like doing commercial auditions every day, going to musical theater all the time and still trying to like do my own thing, it was like I couldn't handle it anymore. And so I had to talk with my agents. They, like, gave me the boost that I needed. Because I've been with them for eight years, and I've never been one to, like, can we have a meeting? Mm -hmm. So I finally had the meeting. And, like, I guess the only thing I've done differently is really just owned who I am. Because I started breaking down, being alone and moving to this new apartment. So I really just started, like, getting into my work. I started learning how to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. I started, like, taking all the equipment that I had and like actually going back to the manual and like really, really trying to understand what I'm doing and like building my business for the self tape has really helped me like one, be a guest in my own space and see like what I need to do and what I need to change and how I can change. And then like I booked, my first commercial I booked was a seamless commercial and it was like, I it was weird. It was like, uh, they wanted us to film it ourselves. They wanted us to like, make up our own story. I pretty much had to do it what like whatever I wanted to do myself and like mm -hmm. I got chosen and that was amazing. And then I got this leaf shave commercial which was my very first audition that I had after quarantine started. Like the quarantine was like the twelfth and then, like the next week I had like a Zoom <laughs> interview. But I think because of not going to no no I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But because I didn't go you know the energy you go when you go to an audition. Mm -hmm. This is making sense, you know I talk too much. Yes. Like the energy of going to an audition and like leaving your house, traveling, getting into the room, seeing all those people, all those nerves and things. Me on a Zoom call, bitch, I am so comfortable. Because, Thank like, you. you I, Thank I, you. Thank you. That is my thing. I'm like, I'm, I, I know how to do this. Other people are like, what, let, me, let me zoom in. Let me do, t wait to talk. I'm like, I'll be here. I'll laugh. Let's just gab. Yeah, We're here. here. And like, it was cool because they got to see me in a way that it would never have happened. Like in, in a normal audition, I got to turn on a Zoom and have the entire creative team, have the entire casting team because nobody had anything to do. So everybody wanted to be there. And just like the fact that I had the ring light and like this purple background, you know what I mean? I still look like I'm at work. That's, I guess that's the cheat that looks like that I've been doing to make it work for me is I still, submit like I am have at a job and so it has really helped me because people take my work seriously and people like are a little more invested in me I feel like right now I feel like I wrapped it up wrong no do yeah do you think it's things like because I would say well they probably hired you because they thought you were charming and you were going through and you're you're, you're all you know that in the bag of chips yeah. but do you really think it's that you know, the, the purple background and that, like, how much does that have to do? Um, I think, yes, one, I do think, like, I am, I need to, I forget, I never own who I am, like, the power of self, I never sit in it. So, yes, I am very charming, I am, you know what I mean, I'm about to work, and, like, I know how to captivate a room, because I'm a host. Yeah. I have to learn. But I also think it doesn't hurt, because once, if you think about it, they always put, like, for commercial auditions, they put every every submission on one long tape and then they just sit there and they watch them and they go through them at once. So when you see, even if they're great lit, if you see eight iPhone submissions in a row and you see one that's on a Canon and it has like studio lighting, it has maybe a little color correction, you know what I mean? It has a uh, lower third and it has me and a microphone. Like it just, it shows them that I can work on set. Hmm. Like it, it, it eliminates all doubt. That has been my motto for this year. Eliminate all doubt. Eliminate all doubt, huh? That's good. I had a casting director tell me that once. She was like, yeah. if you, she was like, make your list of what you need and what you like. Eliminate all doubt. If they, if you know they're gonna need this, can you do that? Yes. I have a teleprompter. I have an ear prompter. 
I have movie lights, I have a traveling kit. I, you know what I mean? Like, especially as a host. This for theater is like normal, but like for a host, I have, if you send me a long monologue, I put that whole on my teleprompter and I just read it and I'm looking straight at the camera and I did it 30 seconds before I submitted it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's different than someone like having to hold a piece of paper because it's a video submission. They're at home, they have a car that drives by. Like you can't hear all that here. So it does, I think it does like give me a little push. Well, I think that's investment in, in your, the, the art and in the profession. You know, like I've, yeah. I've been there. I've, I've seen all these behind the things, behind yeah. these things. And they're like, you know, it's a whole yeah. setup. It's a whole thing. <laughs> have whole... you, so have you, because I know part of it is for you and your hosting, and part of it is for helping other people with their self tapes and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to happen? at a certain point after the pandemic or is it have, there had to be a shift there it was a huge shift yeah. the one i'm on do you know about peer space no so peer space is a platform where you can pretty much open up like they will promote your space for you and people can book your space through them and they take like a little percentage but going through peer space i have to like we like we had to go through all the COVID procedures. I had to get certified for certain things. Mm -hmm. So right now I am technically I have all of my certifications to open. Mm -hmm. I just like haven't opened yet. Yeah. yeah. One because it's hard like how many people right now are gonna want to go and pay for a self tape, you know what I mean, when that world is iffy. Yeah. And how many people and I feel like a lot of people aren't feeling confident enough to make their own material yet either. Yeah. Which is yeah. what the space is great for. So I've really been like setting it up, making it mine, and just, like, working in it. So yeah. that when the time does come, hopefully by January, that, like, I know it through and through. You know right. what I mean? Because yeah. I was faking it before. I mean, I wasn't faking it, but, like, I had still had way more to learn than I realized. Mm -hmm. So I'm open now. I have the, the website is up. I have, like, the appointments open, but it's just really slow. Well, so, like, so I could go on the website right now and, and do yeah. it. Yeah. What is it? It's peer. What? What? What is it? Let me. I have peer space. I can think. Peer space is my. Where's my? Hold on. Let me. Please hold. I'm gonna send you the link. Um, that's cool. It's an interesting thing that these types of. Or if you look up peer space, look up um, loving you elite studios. Oh, it's Loving You Elite now. Oh, yeah. Elite is the studio. Loving Productions is still the LSD. Okay. But Loving You Elite is my studio name. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that for a second. So, so I, uh, we met, we met on Fire Island. Mm -hmm. yes, we, yeah. And uh, that was when I was introduced to thanking you as a concept. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Um, and it turned from thanking you to loving you, and that turned into <laughs> Loving You Productions, and then now it's mm -hmm. Loving You Elite. So what's that timeline? So thanking you was my Joe's Pub show, right? And then that turned in, and then so when I I had been and you hosted as well as and you hosted that show. Yeah, it was a live cabaret show. I had like it turned it started off as a staff talent show, and then it went into like whatever I wanted it to be. <laughs> um, and then so as I was gonna buy my LLC because I was starting to do talk shows with other people, companies who had their LLCs. And I was like, just in case something popped off, I wanted to be at the same level as them. Uh -huh. But Thanking You Productions, which I'd been calling myself just to call myself, was already taken. <laughs> Some Thank You Productions was taken, so they wouldn't let me do Thanking You. Yeah, sure. So then I switched to Loving You Productions because Loving You was always my tag. <laughs> um, but yeah. the, so that is still, that's my production company, Loving You Productions, LLC. But Loving You Elite is just the name of the studio um, that I run self tapes out of. Just because it's a cute little name. And Elite. I remember, yeah, I remember when you became an LLC, and I feel like that's another one of those times when it's like a step. Ooh, a girl. And, and it took, takes many steps to even do that, right? All the steps and all of your money. Well, yeah. This thing is, I didn't even realize what I was getting into. I was an idiot. I mean, right ah. now, I'm so happy now. But at the time, I was like, okay, I just want to like make sure that like if I if we pop off, I have my word. I didn't realize the government was gonna call and be like, okay, so you're running a business. What are you? I had an accountant. I had like 
people checking in. I had like dates that I had to turn shit in on. Like I have to keep every single receipt, every single expense, every single like, I have to run a business. I have to be able to have someone pop up in here from the IRS and be like, okay, great. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So that was like an adult step for me because it was like, okay, we'll get your shit together and like figure out how you can also make money on top of being creative, uh-huh. on top of not knowing what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and they don't teach you that at Broadway Dance Center, girl. No, girl. <laughs> no, they don't at all. They don't teach you nothing but how to count to eight, bitch. Friend, friend, excuse me, friend. <laughs> too real, too real. Take it back. You take it back. <laughs> oh, God. I'm doing my, my silent laugh. That's when you <laughs> oh, that's, when it's, that's when it's deep. It's deep. Got to roll. <laughs> Um, so oh, no, now it's... you're loving your productions, mm-hmm. loving your lead. Yeah. Well, loving your lead is just a student name. I don't really go by any of that. It's just for your space because I needed something cute. Uh-huh. <laughs> and do you think that that will be something when performing? Uh, like, how will you balance all of those? Actually, it's the cool thing about it is like. The studio space actually does make a lot of money when, like, it's popping, especially when when I even have, like, the full, like, setup, because mm-hmm. a lot of my clients aren't even, like, theater people. Like, one of my big clients was a preacher, and so he would like to put his, like, message on tape, and he would like, like, he, he needed a higher quality tape, but didn't want to pay for a higher quality camera. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he would book two, like, two times in a month. Um, for me, and like I had another preacher who came and he just came in once, but like it's been a lot of people who aren't actors or theater people who just need something of good quality with them stuff on tape. Mm-hmm. So that's been good. And now I have like, you can't see it now, but I have a, like four mirrors. When I clear out all the space, it is a huge like dance floor area. And so like I'm renting it out to people who are teaching Zoom classes. Like if you need, you know what I mean? Like if you're tired of teaching Zoom in your apartment, uh-huh. I have like the setup for you i have the ipad with the like zoom account the zoom pro so you can just sign in on mine if you need and like you have the mirrors you can teach at you can turn the camera around and look at the mirrors can oh, i tell girl. you willie uh-huh, d <laughs> i am you you want know why i'm not showing you i'm in my room put this big armchair in my room because my roommate is teaching a ballet class right now in the living room Are you kidding me? and we're sharing you know this like space which is yeah which is fine, and we're making it work, but that's Girl, I have deal. a ballet bar. You have a bar? I have a ballet bar. Girl, he uses the couch as his bar. Honey, so do those hoes, at a- of those friends at ABT. That's... Right, right. Yeah, you, you should like, be white side. Yeah. I mean, it's cute, but she's, she's using her sink. Is what she's she's using. Using, literally, I'm like, she's cooking eggs and doing right. cleaning. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, like, fierce, I guess, but yeah. a, a but no. bar, anything. Cause that was how that was how I, like I thought I was gonna be making money my whole time was taking these like Zoom dance classes. Cause whenever it popped, I was like, oh, I was like teaching one already, and I was like, oh, I can just like teach Zoom dance classes, and then everyone got on and started teaching them for free. So I that I mean, I get it. I know. I was talking to Darren, um, the roommate, and he was like, yeah, you know, cause what I, cause then he's like, I'm teaching donation based things, mm-hmm. but he wants to still have his name, yeah, you know, be around. Sure. So I get it, but uh, yeah. But it's hard because, like, our industry stopped. Right. Our industry stopped completely. And it's it's interesting now that you say it because it's like we have to stay relevant. We have to be, like, someone that people look for and, like, look to. And if everyone else is offering free classes, you can't really offer, a cl- like, a paid class right now. Right. But then it's like, well, where do we – how do we continue our art? How do we continue to, like, mm-hmm. live in a city to offer you free classes? <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? Or offer class in general. It in the same way that before, the, you know, so much of it was like, we got to be paid for our art. We got to be, you know, like, et yeah. cetera, et cetera. The hard work that is put in should be acknowledged, et cetera, yes. et cetera. This so, exposure thing without. I know what. It was like work, I working know. for exposure is very Craigslist to me, you know? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, exposure don't play, pay rent. Pay rent. And the rent is due the first every month. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, well, as a leader and as a host, has that affected you with the Black Lives Matter movement? And have you been a leader there through your hosting or more personally? 
Awesome. Way more personally. Way mm-hmm. more personally. <laughs> yeah. um, but can I be honest? What's yeah. weird about it is I I don't know how to say it. Like it's already it had already affected my hosting, if that made sense. Like kind of really the reason why I'm so adamant about hosting is to change the narrative of what people see in a black man. Because like for me, and like this will be a little shade to some companies, like I, you know me, I work hard. I work long. I think every single thing through. And sometimes like the treatment that I've given to people, they'll be like, this is amazing. This is incredible. Not yet. And like, I low key know that if I was a white guy, I'd be in. They would have picked it. It would have been, but if people are nervous to trust a person, a male, a black male with their platform because of the way people see black men. I have to really win them over. That's why my whole sweatshirt is a black hoodie that says loving you. I told you if I was- I said what? I'm glad. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. I'm you know it's too hot? I know. That's, um, I wore my A-step one and then, oh, I'm gonna end it. You're working. Right. You're working. But no, that's why it like, that is why I have to be so like, all, everything I do is based in love. Everything I, I don't do like, reads i don't do reviews i don't do anything that's like not based on how people can better themselves or think on a different perspective just because it's i'm i forget i'm not gonna forget that i'm a black man but like i forget sometimes i'm like oh you don't what you see and now we've learned it's like all ingrained it's all it could be whatever you don't have to be racist but it's hard for people to like trust me until they get it and then they really get it you know what i mean and so it's been cool because one not cool but once the black lives matter happened i mean i it was it was overwhelming we were all overwhelmed but people reached out to me in a way i've never had people reach out to me before and i realized that people really are rooting for me and really like want me to succeed <laughs> People really, I made that video of me crying over my mom's cards, and I'm not kidding. Like, the I cards, think people, the cards, it's like my most watched video. I think people think I was like about to jump off the roof. <laughs> I really think they were like, he's about to just end it. Well, but I, mean, I you were I vulnerable, which is, so vulnerable. yeah. What, what did you, I don't, did you ever go through a phase of like my time clock switched? So at like the beginning of quarantine, I was fine. And then like two weeks in, I could not sleep at night. I like would stay up all night until the sun rose. And then I would sleep until like That's three or four. Happening. And then like, yeah, and I would just be, I couldn't like focus. So I was like, not on the same wave as everyone else, mm-hmm. but still having to wake up and like work. And I just, I was just worn thin. I needed my family. I, I'm a people person. I love to be around people. I love interaction. I love, you know what I mean? That human connection. So after a month of not getting it, I just, I did not know how to be, <laughs> especially when if I would try, like any escape I had was about black lives, murder, defunding the police, the virus getting worse and worse and worse and worse. You know what I mean? What I thought was gonna be like two or three weeks, maybe a month is now four months. We're going to our second quarter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Someone called yeah. it. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But, but it's I- also been nice because like, I guess on the upside, I hate ending on the down. I've realized how much my voice matters. And like, thank God I have, or whoever, I've been doing this for a couple of years now because now I have something to say and now I know how to say it and it's time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's interesting you were saying, like, I was doing this before. Before, You know, th- that's what stands out to me. You saying, like, uh, you you were doing this by the nature of existing or, or by, by being, that, that really stands out. If you remember, if, I don't know if you remember, like I don't really, like didn't really go out that much. If I did, it was for like an event or like a birthday or a special occasion. Mm-hmm. But most of my time, especially like that last year before Unito, I was recording a video and then literally learning how to edit them. Like watching YouTube on like cool things to do and then trying it out and like doing it wrong and watching it again. Like I was spending hours, every video you've seen took me way longer than I like to admit to like <laughs> edit it. Cause I had to write the music myself. I had to go out and learn how to find copyright. Like 
free music and just like whatever, whatever. And so it was great because I was already in this mindset. So when, really when the, the quarantine happened, it really was like, oh, I can like work at home. I don't have to spend like hours and hours of my day commuting for a five second commercial audition yeah. just to commute all the way back uptown just to sit at home in front of a camera. You know what I mean? Right. It was like I can like, but then I couldn't turn it off. That was, <laughs> that was right. the problem. So it's 5 a.m. Um, and you're, you're still up. And I'm still up and I literally have to turn, I have to just like close it and go to sleep. Cause mm -hmm. like my mind will just want to keep creating or keep, you know what I mean? Make it a, a little bit better. Right. You can watch a Marvel movie. That's what I'm doing to, to, to put me asleep. <laughs> I try, now I try to watch a movie every night. I try to like, when the sun is setting, I go out and I sit on my fire escape with my plants. I try to like decompress. Mm -hmm. I no longer, right now, my goal right now is to live a full life where mm -hmm. I wake up and I like do my sign language. I sit and I like, drink my coffee. Mm -hmm. Then I work and then I decompress from work. Even though it's all mm -hmm. in the same space, I like have to get out and get around. And I city bike every day now with my wipes and my mask. That's right. <laughs> I know. Uh, Jacob, do you know Jacob Lacopo? I don't know if you know him, but he, uh, yeah. yes, he, so he's the person on the lease here. He was doing the Jesus Christ Superstar tour. And uh, like, he left his, Superstar. right? Well, I mean, I mean, but, um, so shout out to you, Jacob. But um, Jacob left his bike here and was generous enough to say, hey, while I'm not using it, y'all can use it. And I'll tell you, that has been something I have taken advantage of. Oh, yeah? And, and really, really um, enjoyed, so. It's I'm, a great I'm, body I'm, workout, girl. Uh huh. I don't know if I can do a hundred blocks down to you and then a hundred <laughs> blocks back up. I don't know if I'm there yet. No, but. no, no, no. I couldn't do that either, girl. Yeah, yeah. I'd be block, block, backing down to 42nd and back. <laughs> I'd, I'd be walking my bike. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's still there, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. Is it weird that you haven't seen Midtown in months? Yeah. Well, and in, in, in the way that I've seen Midtown has been uh, pictures. Picture. Right, and so I'm experiencing New York City, uh, you know, and Washington Heights is is a big aspect of of New York yeah. City, Huge. but not experiencing the like Midtown thing. Um, everything went. Yes. I am legend in this. I bit. mean, tell me about that because you're 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 on in the fifties. Yes. And you saw it when it went from everything to nothing, right? Oh, I moved here when? right before. Right before. I moved here March 1st. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, it's so like, being down here is so different. Being able to walk to an audition. Uh, like literally, right. I gag. That's why I only moved here because of my self tape studio. I was like, I'm going to be 10 blocks away from all the other studios. Like the location is perfect. All the actors will pass through here. Girl, on the 12th, I kid you not, I was leaving a commercial audition at one-on-one. -on -one. I walked outside having no idea what was going on. Jeffrey from Broadway World called and told me, he was like, Broadway shut down for the next month. This is, this is every, I walked home, every single person was on their phone talking about coronavirus. I'm going to quote every single person. Yeah. Freaking out, screaming, laughing, crying, had no idea. Within yeah. that weekend, pretty much everyone had left New York City because our numbers started going up. There was no one. At nighttime, I could walk down Ninth Avenue in the center of the street. And I mean, for like blocks and blocks and blocks, and I wouldn't see a single person, a single car. Like at, after six o'clock, everything was closed. Uh -huh. You couldn't go in. It was, it was to walk through Times Square and be the only person is yeah. mind boggling in the middle of the day. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, How did it feel? Did it feel like, like. Fine. That's why I couldn't sleep. It was so quiet. It was so quiet. It was scary. Uh huh. Cause you know, you usually like, we're New Yorkers, you'll go to, you'll hear people playing music, you'll hear cars go by, you'll hear like a horn or two. When you hear nothing and you look outside and you see nothing and all the lights, because everyone in their buildings are gone, all the lights are off too. I've never felt more alone. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, now like, now it's a complete 180. We're pretty much almost back to like yeah. normal. Well, and for me, it seemed like not, not so much grand. We were in phase, what, one or something like that. Yeah. But the protests seemed to coincide with people getting back on the streets, you know? Yeah. It like, yeah. We were I like, feel like it was definitely the beginning of like everyone going back out, everyone realizing we could kind of be around each other a little bit, everyone feeling like 
human again <laughs> to be able to step outside for a purpose. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Beauty and the Beast reference. Uh, uh, that song. <laughs> human again. Uh, please cast me as Bell. Yeah, right? <laughs> She's good. She's with it. Especially the hair. You got the hair for it. I got wigs. <laughs> she got wigs. I know she you got have wigs. wigs. Yeah, I know you got the wigs. Lace front, for those who don't know. Right, right. You got to. You know that's that was a plan. From one. China. I was like, can I make a, a wig out of it? Um, I don't know how to make a wig. And I was like, can can someone? But it apparently costs a crap ton to, to yeah. make a wig out of human hair. Oh, yeah, especially if it's lace. They lace it. They, like, weave every... Literally has, I know, I mean, hair. that was one of the... My quarantine has had phases, I'll tell you. I had a little yoga phase. Granted, yeah. I had to do yoga a little bit. I was like, I'm going to do it every single day. Yeah. You know, twice a day. And then I had a baking phase. I'm still... Oh, I saw, saw the baking phase. Yes, yeah, okay. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Baking. I, was talking to yeah, I was baking. Yeah. And, and one of them was, uh, I was like, I'm going to learn how to make a wig so that when I cut yeah. my hair, I'll just be able to make do a lace. Um... But that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> um, Willie D, it has been uh, such a pleasure as usual. Um, before the sign off that I know you, uh, we will do. Um, do you have any kind of last words or advice um, to give us? My last word is right now, while we are all in this unique time in life, and we are all having to sit with ourselves really sit with yourself i hope that i know it sounds weird to say that but i feel like life what we took for granted being able to just be we took for granted the fact that we are incredibly powerful people because we had such crazy schedules so before we go back into our crazy life learn to love the most authentic version of you Make that a priority because I feel like once, once being your authentic self is the goal, that to me is when the universe just throws everything that you want or need or supposed to have your way. I know that's really cheesy, but you know, she's that girl. You have to, especially as artists, we are so used to being so critical of ourselves. We are never good enough. We are never what we could do. We always think about the moment. You know what I mean? We always. We yes. always question everything, but we forget sometimes we are artists. We're here. Like we are here right now, this time of life, because we are supposed to be. And there's something about you specifically that this planet, this time, this dimension, whatever needs. So learn to love that. I wish I would have said that earlier when you said, what is the, I've been learning to just love me. I've been learning to understand that like, I can't control other people. I can't control anything really. Everything is to be experienced and then be learned and then let go. Live on attachment. Live, with, live without attachment is my like goal right now. So that's it, learn to love your authentic self. Well, I think it's put very eloquently there, but it's, oh, it's, it's hard. You know? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you're like, we're not, if we are spiritual beings, we are not, this isn't, this is the only physical realm they say. So this isn't our like cup of tea. There's a lot that we have to learn here. And I, I think we have to remind ourselves that like we are here to learn. We are not here to be perfect. We are going to make mistakes. We are going to sin. We're going to, but it's how you treat people, how you treat yourself, how you rise above, how you move through this life with the most authentic you. You gonna make me tear up a little bit? Yes, no, you and you know I'm and you know I mean it. Like you know, like it is the only thing, the only person that you have to be with every single day of your life is you. So why we let so many other people's voices and opinions on us weigh so heavy on our spirit? Yeah. Release. 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 I love you. I love you so much. Ah, everything. You're my everything. You're my everything. Um, I love you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you for having me do this. I'm going to wipe away this and I'm going to put, oof. Girl, that's the gift. That ain't me. That ain't me. That's the gift. <laughs> I'm just a vessel. I'm just yeah, the vessel. Just a vessel. <laughs> um, a good vessel at that. Um, okay, well, while you're um, signing off, I'm going to really try to find this. Um, I can't believe you have it. I mean, I can't okay, believe you I, have it. I might not I can't be able have to wear it, but yeah, it's you said so black shirt with 
Love, Love you. Thank you. Cross. Boom. Um, and I love you so much. You're my everything. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Thank you Thanks for, for speaking me. and giving Thank wisdom. Oh, yeah. cool. right. I love you. you. Loving you. Yeah. <laughs> Loving you. Bye.